Hi everyone, welcome back to the Get A Breed channel. So today I'm in the French and Jobs laboratory. Doug, take us through the process when malt arrives here. Um, well, the, the barley arrives. So we, we've got a lorry here now tipping. Yeah. Um, um, we take a sample and then the sample is brought up to the lab yeah. and it's analysed. And we analyse for a range of different things from nitrogen to yeah. the Vitascout, which is tested on this machine here, yeah. to make sure it will germinate properly. That's the most probably the, one of the most important features. Okay. It has to grow. Um, if it doesn't grow, then we don't get the conversion uh, and we don't make malt from yeah. it. Um, but also nitrogen because that has a knock-on effect if it's too high to the brewers. Yeah. Um, moisture, uh, we have to check for uh, contaminants, that sort of thing as well. Okay. So uh, once it's all passed, uh, yeah. we can then uh, bring it in and uh, start malting with it. So we can actually see there's malt being delivered now, uh, it's being tipped here. Um, so you take three samples from within that trailer? Yeah, three, three speared samples. Three. Okay. We use a spear um, and along the length of the lorry going right down to the bottom. And uh, we, that's brought up and analysed. And until it's passed, um, we can't tip it. Okay. It has to be farm assured as well. Yeah. Uh, so it has to be grown the right way. So there's a, there's a passport so comes with the malt. The passport Sorry, always I comes keep, with I the... I keep saying malt, the passport comes with, with the, the barley. barley. Yeah, 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 so, the, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the lorry drivers bring a, a passport yeah. uh, to show that the grower has grown it under yeah. certain standards um, and not used any nasty chemicals or anything and they're, they're yeah. tested, the farmers and, and merchants are tested by the okay. Red Tractor Assured Scheme. Take us through the machinery used. You'd mentioned that. Um, well, this this is a, a a Vita Scout machine, and that warms up a chemical, tetrazoleum chloride, and that will then turn the very tip of the barley red if it's viable. Okay. If it doesn't turn red, it's not viable. And if we get so many of those, um, we have to reject the load. Okay. And um, and. Um, Sometimes we do, unfortunately, and um, there may have been a problem in the growing process yeah. and that sort of thing. This is just a, a steam distillation unit. This is used for testing the nitrogen with the okay. barley coming in. Yeah. And then over this side, this is um, more the malt side. This is a, a, a water bath. You put samples in here and you boil them up for an hour, but this is a mashing bath. Okay where we can analyze the malts different ways. The EBC method uh, changes temperature, so this can be set to change okay. temperatures um, halfway through the process. Yeah, we, we analyze three different ways, uh, IOB, Institute of Brewers, uh, EBC, the European Brewing Commission, and ASBC, yeah. the American School of Brewing Collegiates. Yeah. And, and so we can analyze each way depending on the customer okay uh, so we can satisfy the customer needs they're not having to do too much work converting figures yeah and um, that sort of thing so uh, we watched the guys uh, so earlier we were at the packaging line the guys were taking a little pinch out of each bag and then that comes over here for the certificate of analysis to be generated uh -huh. um, take me through the parameters on a generic certificate of analysis as in what are the what's Karen doing in here to test for the, the tests are quite simple because it is speciality roasted malts or yeah. coloured malts. Uh, we don't have to do a lot of tests that you would have to do with white malts or distilling okay. malts. Yeah. So basically it's colour. Yeah. We test for the colour. That's the, the most important thing. We test for moisture. Yeah. Um, and we test for extract both dry and wet okay. or as is as people call it. Yeah. Um, and all the machinery here is geared up for that. Okay. Um, we also test for crystallization on the crystals as well because yeah. some brewers like a certain percentage. Yeah. Um, and each brewer has a different specification, so we have to meet that specification. Yeah. So if you do a mash here, what's the purpose? You're doing the mash to check the extract? Yeah, we're checking the extract, um, but also the color. Okay. And the extract can be converted into a specific gravity yeah and again that will help the brewers um, with the figures they, they just do a calculation yeah 
but uh, we've got a machine, a density meter that can do it okay. as well. Yeah. And I can see the guys have been taking, is this colour test in here? Yeah, that, that's yeah. just being filtered. That, that would be used for colour as well as extract. That's okay. uh, measured through the density meter okay. over there um, for extract. Yeah. Um, and, and the specific gravity as well can be, be done by that. All right, take us through the other pieces of kit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. A spectrophotometer measures colour okay. uh, through a, a liquid. Um, and some, some of our customers like a, a reading of that rather than uh, the old-fashioned Lovibon way. Okay. Um, and it will look at specific wavelengths of light okay. through a liquid and it will give you a reading. And, and they have specifications that they like um, to use. Okay, so this is that. just an alternative to the Lovibon method? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it has to be obviously calibrated and tested and... and yeah and things like that. Um, it's an expensive toy to have then, yeah. They, they are, but um, it's one of those things people, yeah. you know, want, want certain analysis, and, and analysis, analysis is getting better and better. Yeah. Um, and technology is keeping up with that now, whereas before um, it couldn't, but now with uh, modern technology and chips and so yeah. on and so forth, it's, um, yeah, it's much better. And when we were doing the tour earlier, obviously we were chatting to the guys operating the roasting drums. Are they bringing samples over before it gets as far as the holding bins? Or yeah, they, they, when, it, when they're roasted, they bring samples up and they're analysed in the lab yeah. um, for colour yeah. uh, and extracts. And they're held in what we call pre-analysis bins. Okay. Once we've got the final colour of that two and a half ton batch, it's then put into the, the bin okay. uh, that holds that. Once that's done, then that can be moved to an outloading bin, uh, bagging off and that sort of thing. With the 25 kilo bags and with the one ton bags we do, a sample is taken out of each bag, okay. uh, mixed, and then that's brought up to the lab yeah. where it's analysed again yeah. For, for colour extract and then those figures are put on to the certificate of analysis for okay. our customers. So the first one is, is for our purposes only to make sure it's going into the right place yeah. um, and then from then on we uh, test it for the customer Okay. and each bag has a, a small sample taken out for analysis. So is there anything that you would highlight brewers should be paying attention to in the COA? Extract mainly yeah. and colour. Yeah. That's what they want. They want uh, a lot of extract, um, but also the, the colour of the malt yeah. to, to give them the, the correct colour of the beer. Yeah. And the one thing we can't test on machine is flavour. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the, the, probably the most important one to a brewer and yeah. to the customer. Um, but we can do that through cre creation of teas and things like that as well. Exactly, the yeah. spirit samples, the tea samples, and yeah. good old fashioned, once you think you, you've, you've got it through using the, the uh, spider graph wheels, yeah. um, a brewer can then make, look at the flavours he wants and make a beer yeah. and get it maybe in the right area, whereas before, without that, they would just have to do trial and error. Yeah. Now they, they can be a bit more specific. What is this fancy Anton power then? <laughs> this is a, um, a density meter. Okay. And that will give you uh, the figures uh, just about to see. There you go, highlight it. Um, the, the, the density and specific gravity of uh, the malts we put through. Okay. Um, and it can also, you know, if you, depending on what samples you put through, it can tell you the percentage of alcohol in there as well. Yeah. Right, Doug, what, what is happening here? Take us through the process. So. Well, the, the, the malt has, has been made uh, and has been crushed to the required level. Yeah. And then it's been analysed using one of the methods. Um, and then it's filtered so we get the work off of it. Yeah. And this is what we test for colour and extract. This okay. is the, the, the important thing. The volumetrics, we have to dilute it down um, so it gets on a specific uh, ring on the Lovibon meter if you're testing it that way. Um, some of them can be just read without doing that, which yeah. is uh, better. You're not introducing factors of errors by diluting. Okay. If you can do it straight, it's much better. 
um, but you can't with the, the much darker ones. So we've got a range of colors here. We've got crystals, uh, we've got a white malt control sample, and we've got patent malts. Okay. Uh, and they're, I'm assuming they're what we made today or yesterday, uh, late on, and they'll be blacks. Okay, yeah. So, um, and you can see here, is this what you were mentioning with the dilution? Do they move it from the plastic yeah. into yeah. the glass? Yeah, because if you put that into a glass vial and put it into one of these, yeah. no light would pass through it. So okay. you have to dilute it down yeah. um, to, to get the best from it. And by lava bond, is that done by eye then? It is, yeah. Okay. It's a colour comparator. The discs are a certain colour. I, I see some of them sitting here. Yeah, the so, machine is yeah. actually behind us here. Oh, this is it on here. The wall. Yeah, okay. Um, and <laughs> it sounds odd, but if you do use one of those, you can't be colour blind because you can't pick up the subtle colour differences. How do they work the extract out? I know they do the mash, but how do they? Is it just. Uh, <laughs> it's a calculation. So it's. A, it's I used to know the calculation off by heart. It's t multiplied by 10.13. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's gravity that you're using the work yeah, that yeah, calculation. Yeah. Okay. A, a gravity bottle is yeah. it's how you do it. Yeah. Nowadays, more advanced, a density meter. Yeah. And it's a lot quicker. Yeah. <laughs> it's more stable. Um, you get a tiny air bubble in a gravity bottle. Yeah. Uh, you suddenly get a wild reading, whereas that machine, if you get a bubble in that, it will tell you there's a bubble in there and yeah. there's an issue and it will flush through and do again and, yeah. and, and things like that. So it takes out yeah. some of the human error yeah. uh, of, of the process and, and will give you an instant yeah. certified readout and you can calibrate it here in the lab yourself yeah. by yeah. putting through known water samples. At zero, yeah. And uh, it you know what the reading should be for distilled water. Yeah, yeah. Like I just wanted you to come in and see the French and Jobs lab. The attention to detail they put into not only the barley coming in from the farmers, but also for the malt going out to you guys, the home brewers and the brewers. And um, so the COA certificate of analysis travels with the malt. If you need access to that, we can provide that for you. Um, but this is not my. I'm not a scientist. I like the brew, but I'm certainly not a, a lab um, person. But it's been interesting to see it, and um, if you need further information on how to get the most out of your malt or how to understand the certificate of analysis, we have videos on that as well. And uh, if you have any technical questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'll happily pass them on to Doug <laughs> or, <laughs> or to Karen, who legged it as soon as she seen the camera. <laughs> so uh, thanks so much, Doug, for the tour. Okay, thank you. And until next time, guys, happy brain.